What's up, brother? All right. Okay. I came home. I turned on Wi-Fi. Let's try it this way, bro. I am so sorry. It's okay, bro. Don't worry about it. If, uh, anyways, it's been kind of so. Uh, been... I'll do it again next week or something, bro. Let me know. I'm down to do it again. Yeah, definitely. So, so I, be I believe uh, we were at um. We good? Can you hear me good? Yeah, it seems to be a little slower still, huh? I can hear you. Okay, great. I guess uh, on my end it's perfect. All right. I'm going to try posting up right here. Oh, all right, great. Uh, so I believe we were right where, where I was asking if you had a chance to travel to paint out of the United States. Yeah, uh, I painted all over. Mexico, I painted in uh, Turkey. I painted in Guatemala. I painted uh, across the States. Uh, yeah, bro, like I, I've been fortunate enough to be invited to like different festivals, different places, different uh, uh, like museums. Um, I've traveled the country extensively, which is pretty cool. Um, now that I have a family, it makes it a little harder because a lot of times, you know, uh, like the museum wanted a piece, which is super dope, but the museum would only pay for travel. You know what I mean? And obviously you get to exhibit your piece for six months, which is dope. But nowadays with a family, that would be harder if I got such an offer, right? Cause I would hate to leave my kids and I still got to cover my bills, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, I think definitely when you're younger in the game, like travel is where it's at because you can just be in a different city for no cost and getting your art up like it's a dream come true at that point you know what i mean like the first time i traveled was and i couldn't believe somebody was willing to pay for me to go to new york and hang out in new york and do the thing <laughs> you know what i mean just to, yeah. like me like they got they got people they got people in new york you're gonna take me out there that's dope <laughs> you know so it was it, it's pretty cool and and i traveled a lot of my 20s and i and 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 i go somewhere for their art or just go somewhere period i encourage them to go because travel is an education on its own the world is so much bigger than your hood like your hood is minuscule like the world is huge like i remember the first time i went to the northridge mall from pacoima i was like what like so like <laughs> you know like now imagine going to new york you know what i mean like it was a big eye opener like it, it definitely makes problems at home feel small like all of a sudden that turf war is really not that important the world is so big you know what i mean like all of a sudden that you know fret is like doesn't because the world is so, so big i'm in new york right now you know what i mean like it, it's 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 a huge eye-opener and it's a huge education and if anybody travels they should man definitely man thank you for sharing that and i i i caught from before before we broke up you mentioning that you were painting at a museum in mexico and you guys That's were the right. first to be that you guys were the first to be accepted as a graffiti form yeah, um, in 2015, the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo Yucatán, the Macay, uh, M-A-C-A-Y in Yucatán, uh, was the first museum in Mexico to open its doors to graffiti formally. It was the first graffiti show. Uh, before that, it was just seen as vandalism. And that museum said, well, this is really an art form, and we're going to recognize it by inviting artists, an artist from El Yucatán, an artist from... Mexico City and we're going to get somebody international in here and then that's when I came in um yeah it was it was a dope show um the the homie down there Nuki uh phenomenal writer and uh and and when I spoke like the what I was mentioning this earlier actually like the way I explained graffiti to like the elevated ritzy crowd in Mexico was you know, they're all sitting there with their fans because it's like Yucatan and their suits and there's all these politicians. And I was like, you guys go around town, I'll go around the city looking at the walls and saying, what is that? What is that scribble? What I can't, I don't understand it. I don't know what it means. It's confusing, kind of scary. Like, I, I'm not really sure what this is. It's confusing. You know, I don't know how to interpret it. And I said, you know, people think that about graffiti, but I think most people think that about the pieces in the museum now. They look at them and they're like, what the <laughs> "Like, I don't know." Yeah, definitely. Is. I don't know what this is. I don't know why it's here. I don't understand its purpose. I don't know who made it. Like, why am I looking at this? So, you know, it comes down really to perspective. Like, they're looking at our at our art. Like, what the fuck is that? And we're looking at their art. Like, what the fuck is that? And at the end of the day, everybody's right. It's all art and it's all a form of expression and it's all a beautiful thing. 
and uh, I commend them for opening the doors to graffiti artists and, and, and being so early in the game at doing so because you know, there was a time when I was growing up, like graffiti was just flat out not accepted. Like it was an act of vandalism. Like it was associated with like a negative lifestyle. You know what I mean? And, yeah, definitely. Like I'm sure you had your your you know your mom, your dad coming at you talking <laughs> about what are you? Que estás haciendo, mijo? Like, you know, like, tus pinches botes de mierda de aquí. It's the devil, you know. And it's like, yeah, man. So. It's 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 been a wild ride. Like like so far, like like I've said, I encourage people to travel. It's super dope that music that that graffiti has been elevated to the same level as other art, and that going back to what we started the conversation with opens up more doors because as graffiti becomes accepted in the dominant culture, you find that more people are willing to accept graffiti in their products. So. You might see graffiti at a Foot Locker store. You might see it at an H&M somewhere at the mall. You might see it at a shoe store. And all of a sudden, it's part of branding. And people see graffiti now as an art element or as a component, not as vandalism. You know, 20, 30 years ago, if there was graffiti at your store, they'd be like, dude, are you going to claim that? Who did that? You know, it would be. Yeah, graffiti. definitely. But now it falls in line. Like, look at, look at all these hip hop artists. All this, like, everything's graffiti. Graffiti is where it's at. And it makes sense when you think about it. When you look at the elements of hip hop, hip hop was always seen as a raw from the street sort of negative form of expression. But hip hop comes to us in three forms. We have the music, right? Which is the MC yeah. and the DJing. We have the graffiti element, right? And we have the pop and lock. We have the dance element. I feel like hip hop was the first to take off the music element. We've been loving hip hop for 30, 40 years now. Next was pop and locking like we got the jabberwockies now herman flores is running the jabberwockies they got deals at las vegas strips they got deals at universal studios like pop and locking is mainstream it's in every like every artist wants to be coached for their music video on some locking and some popping and some sick ass moves and i just feel like graffiti was the element to reach that so we had the music followed by the dance and now the last sort of trickle in on the on the on the last third of hip-hop is graffiti and it's here it's arrived we're here we're living it we're, we're in the good time because 30 <laughs> years ago we would have been you know ducking and dodging cops and running around now we're making a living off this shit you have a page promoting it you know what i mean so do i yeah and and we, we don't have to live in fear or hide what we do beautiful thing to live that is that's a beautiful thing to live man you're definitely right about that i mean it's it's amazing what it's become because before i've had i have i had the chance to talk to a lot of artists established like yourself and then they mentioned the same thing that it was tough to say you were a graffiti writer back then. It was. Can you, you hear you me? You didn't say it. You didn't talk about Can it. you hear me? You know? And then, yeah, it, uh, it's because you cut off for a, a little bit. An OG writer. A couple seconds in, you cut in off. Catan in Mexico. I, I can't hear you right now. Can Did you I hear me? You I can hear you. Oh, I could. Great. I'm just making sure because you cut off for a couple seconds. I couldn't hear you. But yeah, man, like you were saying, like it, it wasn't easy for the older cats, you know, like uh, down in uh, Mexico, an OG writer was saying like, you know, you guys talk a big game, but you guys got caps. You guys got cans, low pressure, high pressure, different brands, all the fucking colors in the rainbow. He's like, we didn't have this shit. He's like, if we wanted, if we had yellow and blue and we wanted green, we had to do that thing where you get two male fucking ends on the fucking can and then you put one can on top of the other one with no pressure one full and you watch it go shh, and then you test it and you keep doing that until you get the green like we're talking fucking chemist scientist shit right here you know what i mean and they were figuring it out he's like we would jump into we would jump into macy's we would jump into like the local clothing store and we'd steal all the caps off the perfumes because all the little caps gave you different and then we'd fuck with those effects and try and figure out how it could you know implement into our work so like yeah man I, I i have mad respect for the people who put it down before us because they were putting it down without the tools that we have today without the platforms without social media so we have we have big advantages and and i think we need to leverage them and we need to see more people making a living off graffiti making a living off art because it's never been easier yeah definitely brother i, I i'm on with you on that it's 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 been a, a long journey but it's good to see where it's at now where people are, you know, getting paid and 
launching careers and a whole lot of other stuff. That's where it's at. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I, was, I wanted to uh, get into it. If you could share a little bit about your process on the mural, like when they give you a wall, what is your process? Like, how do you come up with the idea, and how do you initiate the the whole, the whole um, piece? You know, it's always different. Sometimes I have an idea of something I want to paint. Like, I'm Lamar next, um, so Kendrick's gonna get painted. I'm probably gonna do them on the same building I did uh, Zach and uh, Dave a couple weeks ago. Um, so I've been wanting to paint. Uh, Kendrick, I'm going to paint Kendrick on this wall. Sometimes I get the wall first and I'm like, oh, what would be sick on this wall? So you're really, yeah. you're kind of playing maker there and you're trying to like match artwork with good walls and some walls are better for some art than others, you know. But once I kind of establish that, I'm pretty traditional, bro. Like, like uh, when I'm on the wall, I, I, I grid it and I draw, like I, I don't really project like, like if it's practical, you know what I mean? Like indoors and, and it's like for money. So I'm trying to get in and out, you know, finish fast. Yeah. But most of my stuff, I just grid it. I grid the printout. I grid the wall. I go out there and I paint it. Um, just freestyle over the grid. And uh, it's pretty easy from there. I use brushes. I do all my fills. And then I do highlights and shadows just like you would graph um, just on a face, you know. Um, I've, had, I've had a chance to, to see some of your murals, the, the portrait murals. And um, they're amazing, brother. And I just wanted to ask, like, is 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 that is is that something that inspires you, like the portraits, or or is that something you just it's just something you enjoy doing, or maybe both? A little bit of both, bro. You know, um, I when I was younger, my dad's an artist. I mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I would draw cars, and then pops would be like what are you doing drawing cars? You're wasting fucking time. Study anatomy, study human figures, draw faces. I'd be like, all right, fuck, you know, like whatever. I thought it was dope. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> next, you know, painting a fucking house, a building. Matter. If I was doing anything that wasn't anatomy or a person, my dad'd be like, you're wasting your time. He's like, if you learn to draw cars, you're going to know how to draw cars. If you learn to draw houses, you're going to know how to draw houses. But if you learn how to draw people in anatomy, you can paint and draw anything in the world. And that's what my dad always told me. And it was great advice because I started doing just faces and I got pretty good at the faces, you know. And then when somebody would be like, can you do this? I'd be like, yeah, I can do that. That's, that's no problem. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he was right. Like, you know, like by concentrating on anatomy and con concentrating on, on, you know, like the way things are put together, light and shadow, like you can paint anything. Essentially, I learned to paint, you know what I mean? People always say, like, how can I get better at painting faces? And I always say, just get better at painting. You want to get better at painting. If you get, like, there's no such thing as getting better at painting faces. Like, you, you're, you, you paint or you don't. And if you're a certain caliber of painter, that's the caliber of painter across the board, typically. Um, so I, I recommend anybody who wants to get better at painting, study anatomy, because it's going to make you better at everything. And also, bro, like, it, it kind of sounds like a joke, but school, like, school's big. And not necessarily because of what the professor's saying bro what your homies are saying to the left and right of you man like those are the guys yeah. that are gonna be like bro your shit's dope i know the homie at the spot he's looking for someone like that hey bro i just got a job at this spot you could work there you know like hey man your shit's dope let's go catch this wall like hey like that's why you want to go to school and that's why school makes your art better like it's it's got almost nothing to do with the subject matter on the class you know what i mean it's the fact that you're there with like-minded people that are similar in age and interests right like if you sign up for the art class you're going you're gonna to meet a bunch of other heads that are probably your age and into art. So that's why you want to go to school. Fucking A plus or the B plus or the fail, bro. Like, so I always encourage people to go to school and like meet people, network. Can you hear me good? I, I got you back, man. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I, um, I think we Instagram were great. Like, when I start getting getting intense <laughs> i'm just i'm just used to i'm not used to it because it's, it's never broken it's never broken up that bad on me before like usually it buffers a little bit but I'm not sure a lot I am, bro. but um man it's, it's good that you mentioned that too brother because you know it's, it's also good to, to take some some classes for the benefits that you mentioned and and you know you can get to know people that love something as much as you do
Do you have a do you have a favorite Do you have a favorite brush you go to? Like a what, like a, a favorite style of brush that you enjoy using? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll show you, bro. If I can go to the studio without losing the losing the con All right. connection, bro. But essentially, like, you know those cheap ass, bro. Ah, shit. Like that's all I use. Oh. Like the big dollar ones, or like? Oh, I think I lost you. Did I lose you? I I can still hear you. The dollar ones, bro. Let me see. This guy. It's still it's still buffering. Am I back? This guy. Yeah, yeah. All oh, the big ones from the. They come in assorted sizes, homie. Like you can get them yeah. four inch, three inch, or the two inch. You know what I mean? Like, and that's pretty much all I use. Like everything you see on my Instagram, everything you see on my webpage, all that stuff. Like, like ninety percent of it was painted with a brush or a three inch or a two inch. But it's 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 that same brush you see at Home Depot every time. They're supposed to be disposable. As you can see, this one's been through a few like rounds of artwork. Like I don't really throw them away. As they get shorter, <laughs> they get better for other things. The dollar brushes at Home Depot, like you know, like if if you can paint, bro, you can paint with dirt and rocks. You know what I mean? Like it Definitely. doesn't matter what they put in your hand, you're gonna be able to paint. You know, so I I always tell people don't necessarily go out and buy the best paint and the best brushes and the best anything because if your art is dope, your art is gonna be dope if you do it with. Like you can get mud on the floor and it's gonna be dope. So, you know, I, I think it's a prime example. It's breaking up a little bit. Oh, there we go. We're back again. <laughs> do you, hey, bro, do you enjoy like more of a strip? <laughs> I know. I start, it starts stripping. I'm trying to figure I'm trying to get it to where it doesn't do that no more. Can you hear me right there? Can you hear me? All right, good. No, it's good. It's still buffering you. over here. But you can hear me. That's what matters. You can hear me good? Let's see. Why is it doing that? No. Test, test. Test, test. Can you hear me? Why is it freezing up? Let's see. Yo, 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 yo. Can you hear me, brother? Test test. Got I, I hear hey. something. I can hear you. You good? I think we got it mm -hmm. this time, bro. I didn't, I'm on my phone this time, so I think we can actually even walk around. But like I was saying, bro, cheap brushes is where it's at. Like, don't let the materials define your artwork, homie. Like, you're as good as you are, not because you're as good as the brushes. Like, there's, it's not because the paint is good. You know what I mean? You're as good as you are. There's, there's some shit I've been working on. Like, you probably haven't seen. I don't really post everything. So those of you who are on right now seeing some shit, I don't really post. Like, I'm working on this piece here right now. This guy's working on my uh, El Camino. He's doing the paint job on it. So I'm painting his portrait here real quick, hooking the homie up. Have you oh, man, that's dope right there. <laughs> Auto body, bro. You already know. Santa Clarita. <laughs> All the way up there. I, I, as far as um, another question I wanted to ask, um, do you do you prefer – I know you say you, uh, you could use anything, but as far as paint, do you prefer more of a, acrylic or oil base? Uh. I came up on oil base with pops. Like you got to realize okay. in the 90s, like all this, like the real talk about oil and water is really a two thousands talk. Like before the, before the two thousands, like it was really just all oil. Like you're doing sign painting in oil. You were doing like the murals and oil. like you're doing it all in oil. Very few people were using acrylic paint. The technology wasn't there yet. Acrylic paint was okay. like painting fucking oatmeal. You know what I mean? It was fucking, it was ridiculous, but Time, time kind of caught up, you know what I mean? And in the 2000s, like, paint just got better. It got, you know, they got the paint and primer now, so it covers real good. Like, back then, you needed, like, 20 coats on something. 
and these varieties and it caught up. So now obviously acrylic, uh, just cause it's easier to clean up is better for your health. But I learned with oils, everything I ever, I ever did as a kid with my pops was in oils. Um, it's a great way to learn. Definitely brother. How, how does pops feel, feel now seeing that, you know, you were just a kid hanging out with him and now you're, you're following his footsteps. How does he feel about that? Uh, I'm sure he's real proud, man. Pops likes to talk shit. So, like, every time, like, every time I'm, like, check out what I just did, he's like, yeah, but you don't got the Hollywood Arts Council Award for Public Arts, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, oh, get it, watch. I'm going to get it just to, just to show him up. Like, I'm going to go after it. But, yeah, my pops is very accomplished, so it's hard to impress that guy. You know what I mean? Like, but, uh, yeah, he's real proud, man. Like, you know, when I first started doing it, he didn't get it because my dad's a commercial artist. That's what he does for a living. So when I told him I was painting up and down Pacoima for free and he started looking at the giant murals I was doing, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, who's paying for all this shit? I was like, I'm paying for this shit. He's like, <laughs> why the fuck are you paying for this shit? Like, you know, you're wasting time, you're wasting materials. But like, it took him a couple of years, you know, and after I painted, you know, for so long that it kind of started a thing in Pacoima, it kind of clicked in my dad's head and he realized that it wasn't about the money. You know what I mean? Like for him, it was always like, how is this making you money? Like, how is this going to make you money? And he didn't get it. He didn't get it that it, it didn't have anything to do with money. You know what I mean? Like, like everybody else who gets up, like, we're just trying to get up. You know what I mean? That feeling of being alive, that feeling of, of, of sharing your talents, of pushing yourself, of like, every time I start a wall, it's a new challenge. It's different every time. And, you know, you got to conquer new challenges every time. You got to, you, so you, you really got to push yourself, you know what I mean? And grow like on the wall as you're painting and, and those are things that money can't buy. Those are highs and fears that money can't buy. So I just kept going back to the wall. And I think Pops understood because Pops is down in Hollywood painting one for free right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if anybody's out there, catch him on Santa Monica and Wilton. He's uh, next to the Harvey Apartments right there. Uh, they changed the name. It's not Harvey Apartments anymore. But Santa Monica and Wilton is at the mechanic shop right there. He's got all sorts of murals going up. Marlon Brando, fucking Lucy, Ricky Ricardo. Like, you fucking name it, bro. He's got them all up. He's doing, like, 20 heads right there. Oh, man, that's dope. Yeah, pull up. <laughs> um, I, there's a question that I like to ask uh, everybody that, has, that I get a chance to speak to on Cryland Talk. Do you have a favorite shoot to paint in? A favorite shoe? Yeah, to wear while you're painting or sketching or canvas work. Shit. P-Rods. Nike SB. The Nike? <laughs> yeah, those are... Those are uh... I had I rocked those shoes for like five years. Like, you can't see a picture of me painting without me wearing those Nikes, bro. <laughs> like, but in general, bro, for me, any skate shoe. Like, and if you think about it, it makes sense. Like, I'm on scaffolding, which is 12 inches wide like a skateboard. I'm on fucking ladders, which are slippery, and I need to keep my grip like on a skateboard. And there's nothing like that flat sole because no matter what, I always feel like I'm in control of my footing. Like if you have something with an arch, like it's a little sketchier like being up there. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I skated coming up, you know what I mean? So I feel like yeah. if I can beat like real good, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'll be set. But yeah, man, like I I'm gonna go with Nike SBs, the P-Rods. Dope. The last question I got for you, brother, before I let you go, is I wanted to ask you um, if you could share some words for anybody out there that might be listening to this, that, that enjoys art in any form and wants to start. Is there any words you could give to them? Yeah, man, find your inspiration and follow it. You know, like I, I always say I, I, I try and help and do what I can, like in my community, on, in, you know, in my hood, on my block, in my street, I, like whatever I want to do. Like, I'm a painter, bro. So that's kind of what I bring to the table, and that's what I try and do. I, I paint, and I try and help with paint. So if there's an artist out there, like, you know, don't just concentrate on the money all the time. Like, go out and do something good for yourself, for your community. If you're not a painter, this applies to you, too. Go out there and sing. Go out there and dance. Go out there and skate. Go out there and do what you do for the people. You know, go out there and share it. Expose that element of yourself especially if you're a person of color, because in times like this, it's important for people to see us for more than just our skin color. They need to see us for what we are, what we do, which is contributing members of society. We work hard, we pay our taxes, we contribute, we paint murals, and we do dope ass shit as a people here in this country. And it's important that people see us doing that. Like they can't just see us in the at home smoking pot, bro. That's not where, it, that's not where it's at. 
Definitely, brother. I mean, there couldn't be no better way to put that, man. I really appreciate, I really appreciate your time today, brother. Of, you know, give me a chance to speak to you today, and I look forward to meeting you after this COVID nineteen is over. I can't. Hold on, hold on. I, give me a second. I, I can't hear you. We're gonna be over give me a second. Hollywood give me a second. You're buffering a little bit. About three weeks. Can you hear me?